Okay. Rest in peace, eardrums for headphone users. My microphone is about five inches closer to my chin than normal. But, and now, introducing my favorite concept in seventh grade math. Using the percent proportion. This is section 9-5. And we're going to shoot through these examples. We're going to do every single one of these examples. Why? Because I love it. Oh, I love proportions with percents and decimals. Why do you like it so much? I like it so much because it just makes so much sense, and you're going to use this your whole life. It's wonderful. Oh, okay, so you'd rather be like, yay, I learned this today. I have a quiz on it tomorrow, and I'll never see it again. Yeah. No, you are being contradictory. All right, so using, it's not, uh, using the percent proportion, there's a couple things that we're going to write in here that is uh, a concept where on the left side is going to be one thing, but the big, huge thing to remember for the day is going to be the one on the right that's written just on, under Thursday, December 4th. So we have a, uh, a proportion here, and what it's going to be is a percentage and a base. Base. Spelled B-A-S-E, not all about that base. The per yeah, I'm writing it, so you write it. The only time you don't write what I write is when I say don't write this. And this is a rate. It's a percentage, yeah. That and percentage. What? How far am I zoomed in? So I almost did it again. Percentage. No, I said you write what I write. Don't do what I do. Unless I tell you otherwise. So percentage over a base is a rate. Now, here's the main thing of talking about making, uh, finding percentages using pr a proportion, okay? And that is, if you see the word is, it's going to go right here. If you see the word of, it's going to go right here. This right here is going to be where the percentage is. And this right here is always going to be 100. I don't know. When we get to it, I'll let you know. But yes. So you're always going to have 100 in the base whenever we're finding how to do that. And now what we're going to do is you are going to do something to draw your attention to that when you're studying next Wednesday and Thursday for Friday's quiz. Next Wednesday and Thursday for Friday's quiz. Nope. Yeah, it's, it's uh, we have the Performing Arts Holiday Concert Extravaganza with special guest LeBron James. What? Oh. Uh, correction, sorry, I got your hopes up. He did cancel. I'm sorry. Uh, er. Did he? Yeah. Oh, I'll have to find out. I'll, I'll get on that. I'll get on it. So we have examples one through three. So I really want you guys to make emphasis on that because that's something that is going to be huge. Okay? Now, whenever we see a fraction, it says here, express each fraction as a percent. Okay? Now, some of these you might be able to know right off the bat. In fact, this first one, you all had better know exactly what that percentage is because you've had sixth grade math before, and we did that in my sixth grade today. Okay? Yes? What is it right off the top of your head? 0.25, which is what percent? 25%, yeah. So it's, yeah that's going to be 25%. So. That one is super, super obvious. So I don't need a proportion with that. And I'd be OK with, you, with something as simple as a quarter. OK? A quarter, I expect that you would know how to do that. We're gonna, I'm going to show you how ones when they're not that easy. OK? It's the same, a similar situation. We had a homework assignment that said that, that. One equals what percent? Oh, it's 100%. OK? I expect that you would know some of that from last year. Now let's get into stuff that I won't expect you 
to automatically know right off the head. This one's pretty obvious as well. Jeff, what do you think it is? 65%. Because we got four, 2 times 5 is going to be 100, and 13 times 5 is going to be 60 what? 65%. Let's prove it. Here's how we're going to set this up. This here is your part. This here is your whole. Okay? That there, and I can rewrite that up here. So is, which is part. Is is the part. Of is the whole. Okay? Is is the part of as a whole. So we have 13 of 20. What goes on the top of this fraction bar here? Hmm. Ms. Brown, what goes there? The part, uh, we, do we have in this proportion the number 100 anywhere? No. But look at your part that you highlighted. Where does 100 always go? On the base side, right? All we're doing is just rewriting this here. 100 is always going to be right there. So as soon as we're doing all these, you put that in there. So we have 100. So what is going to be in the numerator there? Yeah. I don't know that yet. Jeff said that it's 65, but I know he's a smart kid. And we want to prove him how smart he is and everybody else who knew that was. And people who don't know, we're going to discover. And then you will be that smart with mathematics. So what's going to go? Do we know what's here? No, we don't. Not yet. So what do we put in the spot of the unknown, people? Sorry. A variable. Okay, and I'm going to use a Z this time. Now I have a proportion I need to solve for z. I'm going to cross multiply the way we've been doing this all week. I'm going to cross multiply that way as well. So I'm going to have 13 times 100 equals 20z. See why I have that cross over that z now so it doesn't look like 202? So then I'm going to pop over here and do that, which is 1300. Yep, 1300 equals 20z divided by 20 to get z by itself. Okay, what do I have? Well, here's, here's a clue. We already, if we trust uh, Jeff, it should be what? 65. And 1300 divided by 65, or uh, divided by 20 is 65. So we've solved for Z. 60, boy. 65, yes, sir? this. This works with everything. The part that you did doesn't work in the situation that you just said. So uh, what the student was saying is what if the, the, uh, the denominator here, what, I'm, what we're looking at, what if that one was not easily going into 100? And that's why we do what we're doing right now. Okay. So we have 65. Then I'm going to write down 65% and I'm circling 65%. We have found what z is, and it asks us what is, or to put that one as a percent, so our answer has to have a percent in it. Okay, the answer has to have a percent in it. Same situation here. This one is super easy. Do you already know what it is? It's already 80%. It's already 80%. Let's prove it. You know that it's 80%. 25 times 4 is 100. 20 times 4 is 100. That's the mathematicians in you. What? 
Did I say 100? No, I meant 20 times 4 is 80%. That's the mathematicians in you. But for those of you who don't have that mathematical reasoning, let's work this out again. Here's my part. Here's my whole. I'm going to take this. I have an unknown percentage. This is always going to be 100. I'm going to cross multiply from what we've done earlier this week. And 20 times 100 is just 20 plus two zeros, or with two zeros on the end, equals 25x. Divide each side, divide each side. You're with me on that far, right? Yeah. Okay, I want to make sure that we're, I'm not losing you in the other day's lessons, and that's why I'm popping through it kind of quick. So I'm going to have x equals 80, and my answer is 80%, because from the thing I did above, that is the percent. So if you just have 80 there, that's like not using the unit. I need you to use the unit. Yes, sir? You lost it on the end of the 20, about over 25. Um, 25 to over 25, you lost it at that spot. Okay. Like, well, I got the just as we've been solving for equations for a couple months now, what's happening to x is it's being multiplied by 25. And I want to get x by itself. And the inverse operation, or opposite, of multiplication is the ops. No, that is multiplication. 25 times x. What is the inverse of multiplication? The opposite. Division. Yes, division. So if I want to get x by itself, I have to divide each side by 25. And because of the division property of equality, I have to keep each side the same. OK? Well, I 2,000 divided by 25 is 80. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. I explained that. I way over explained that that I needed to. <laughs> Okay. Mm. Mm. okay, write a proportion for each of the following using the models above. Solve the proportion. This is the part where the words that we have in quotations, or yeah, in quotations, are going to be very beneficial for you. I know what it is. Okay, well, we're going to do, do this right now. Okay, we're going to do this right now. So, we have the word... Of 90. And in our proportion up top, in our proportion up here, there's an of that we highlighted. Where is the of going to go in our proportion? Kaylee? Um, the... Kylie. What is it? In the denominator. In the denominator? Does it really matter what side? Does it matter what side it does? Not, not really, because as long as you have the part and whole there. So we have of 90. Boom. So I put of 90 because that's where in our proportion at the top of our notes it said where of goes. Then this side here, what is in this spot in that proportion up there, Jeff? Uh, that would be 70. 70. Good, because it says up there that's where the percentage goes. And then Morgan, what? Can, tell me what uh, goes in either side of this. What's can go in any of the um, spots? Good, good. On top of 90 is x because we're looking for, we're trying to find out what is 70% of 90. So I do the cross multiplication. I have 100x equals 3,600. No, 63. I did the same thing earlier. 6,300 there. Now, if you have run out of room like this, I'm going to rewrite this now over here where I have 100x equals 6,300 6, over 100. 100. And whenever you divide by 100, do you know the trick of it? Um, you just take away the two zeros. Yeah, however many zeros you have in the, one, in the, in the, uh, the multiple of 10, you just take those many zeros out. <laughs> so these, this zero, this zero, this zero, this zero. So now we just have 63 over 1, which is 63. Now, do I have to rewrite it as 63%? No, because we're not looking for a percent. We found the percent. We found the percent. 
we're finding 70% of a 90. Okay? Any questions? No? Now, we're just going to set these other ones up because I want to make sure we get through these and maybe give you guys a couple minutes to start your homework. Now, we're fi the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write, I'm going to zoom in so I can see this better, to hundo. We're, now we're finding 24% of 10.5. I'm going to create my proportion. Where does 20, the number 24 go, Kirsten? Kirsten. Top left. OK, we want to go top left. Sounds good to me. Nothing wrong with that. My goodness. See, I'm turning around looking at you guys, turning around looking at the board, getting all mixed around. Trevor, since uh, can you tell me where the number 100 is going to go? Because it's going to show up on all these. Um, bottom, right. bottom right. How sure are you of that? Where does 100 relate to the percentage? In your upper right stuff that you highlighted up there. Where, where is it in relation to the percentage? True, it's also in the denominator. Good. But what did we, what's number 24? What's the number 24 in this situation here? True. So where does the percentage sign go with relation to the number 100? Yes, in that one up there. But doesn't this equal sign mean that we can have it on either side? And she was perfectly correct with putting that here. It's always, 100 is always going to go below the percentage. Okay? It's always going to go below the percentage. Okay? Then here's the word of. There's the word of. So where does 10.5 go? Yeah? Denominator on the right. Beautiful. Which makes this our variable. Okay? I'm trying to give you every situation that you can have. Every situation. Okay? We'll go over to... Six. Yeah. What number is 75% of 600? I want you all to try write that proportion right now. I'm going to give you a minute to try to set that up. I'm going to give you one minute to set that up. And for some of you, this is going to be super easy, but I want to make sure that you are demonstrating that you can show me that you know how to do it. The variable is going to be one of the things that you don't know here, whether it's is or whether it's of or whether it's that one. So it's always going to be one of those three spots because that's always going to be 100. And that's why it's not, um, that's why it's an actual integer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you have this, you have it correct. What number, I don't know what number, is 75%, I know it's always going to be 100, of 600? That's how you should have it set up. If you have it the other way around where it's 75, um, 75 over 100 equals x over 600, you're good. That would just be switching these two decimals around, and because of the reflexive property, you're good. Next one, 13 is 5% of what number? 13 is 5% of what number? So right away, as soon as I see a percent, I'm going to do this. You guys do that side. Excuse me. Thirteen is five percent of what number? Sean, can you help me out? 
What do we got? Thirteen. Okay, X. Yeah, because it's saying is thirteen. Thirteen is, and you have those that word is in your highlighted part. Yes, sir. Okay, that's going to be a common mistake that many people are going to be doing on the homework tonight. But keep in mind that it's telling you 13 is. And in your upper right here, where is is? Look here. Yep, see how it's on the top? And then it says of what number? And what I'm drawing to the student's attention is here we have is that's on the top and of that's on the bottom. And it was saying of what number? So of what would be um, the variable. So technically the term turn down for x would be turn down for what? Yes? How can we do that on six? For six? Because it's a different question. They told us what the of is for number six. Here it's of what? Of what? Okay. Uh, one other thing about my YouTube videos is sometimes I'll just have them playing in the background just to make sure that there wasn't anything that I just say without realizing it as far as out of context could be trouble. Um, every single video I almost, every time, almost every video I start with, okay, so, yeah, I know you guys really care about that. All right, do, 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 do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in something over 100, because I know that 100 is always going to be the situation for what we're doing. Now we have 36 is. 36 is. Charlie, where does 36 go? At the top, because that's where is uh, goes. And then we have of 24. Where does that go, Donovan? Bottom left, beautiful. And it's saying, what percent? So that's, boom. Yes, sir? So, so of is always on the, on the by side, and then is always on the left side? Ugh. No, not at all. No, look. Of is always below is. Oh. OK, that there. You might want to rewrite that with a little bit more legible handwriting so you can see what you're doing, OK? Good? So do you see how we're setting all these up? Rather than taking the time to do that proportion, because we did that just yesterday, we did it for a couple on it. So when you're doing your homework tonight, you have this chilling right here, and you have your homework right next to you. You can see a couple of examples, but this is the bottom line. This is how we set it up. All right, Joan. Let's talk about Joan here a little bit. Joan's income is $190 a week. Okay. Numbers in the head. She saves 20% of her weekly salary. I, I'm going to pause right there and just go ahead and do this. Right? Because I know where the percentage goes. Of her weekly salary. How much does she save in each week? Okay, I got some of the information. I'm going to go ahead and read it again so I don't make any silly mistakes. Joan's income is $190 a week. She saves 20% of her weekly salary. How much does she save each week? Okay, so is 190 part or whole? Yes, Kaylee. Kylie. Kylie. Kaylee. See? Mm. Kaylee. So is it part or whole? Um, part. Part? One, she makes 190 a week. Is there anything that's asking about more income? I know that was an accident. You're fine. <laughs> Careful. Is there anything talking about bigger than that? No. If so, is one nine? Is there anything else that she's getting? So, what would one hundred ninety dollars a week be a part of? There we go. So, what I just asked the student, she said that it was going to be one ninety was a part, and everybody listen up with this. You have to ask yourself. What is 190 a part of if it's part over whole? Right? What is 190 a part of? The week? Well, the week isn't a number. We're not asking how many days. So we'd set that up. 
like this. X over 190, and uh, eh, no. That would be the setup for that one. Yes? If it was a part, it would be on the top. You're correct. Because that's how you question whether you're doing it right. Is one, what would 190 be a part of as far as numbers go? Okay. And they're asking about each week. So 190 is her income a week, and they're asking how much a week of that percentage. All right, now we have some number of words. It says 90%. Boom. Am I going to pause right there and do something? What should I pause right there and do? Yes. 90 over 100. And I'm going to do it on the left side just so I can show you that um, you guys can do it multiple ways. 90 over 100. Beautiful. Of the seats in the flight are filled. Okay? So we have seats that are taken, seats that are not taken. When I go into the next sentence, that's what I'm thinking of. There are 240 seats. Hmm. How many seats are filled? Oh. Okay. 240. Is that the part or the whole? Sorry. That is the whole. Exactly. There are a total of 240 seats available yes no okay thought I heard my name or was just somebody going whoosh, whoosh. were you going whoosh. or was that Mr. Smith yes it is $38 yep $38 is the answer for number nine so I have three things here what's gonna go in this spot in the numerator yes a variable good and uh, Cheryl, what should we put as the uh, variable? Let's do something we haven't used before. S. S. Or should I do how you guys like to do it? No, I didn't. I've been doing that since 95, yo. <laughs> it's a rite of passage for middle schoolers, by the way, um, that people try that. So it's S. So you don't have to do that. I'm just kidding. Make it S. Okay, and that one, when you're done with it, would come out to 216 seats. Are there any questions on this? Okay, yes, sir? Yeah, remember, whenever there's words in the question, you're going to want to have words in the answer, or units, words or units, one, two, Three, four, because percentage technically is a symbol, but it's still a unit. Two, Can I take three, all your in four. My no, because my activity is awesome. Okay. Any questions right now before I end the vid? Nope.